Welcome to Asheville Springs. It's really, really cold. It's freezing. Which was a pain for the folks back in 1762, who complained it made their horses ill. But it's actually perfect for a certain type of creature that you may not have ever even heard of before. bodily equipment needed to function. You might think it needs some lungs or gills or even these pores that insects have, a way to transport the oxygen it needs into its body. You may think it needs a heart to transport oxygen around its body so it can be used in the chemical reactions to power the cells. But in fact you would be wrong. These bizarre creatures have been around for 270 million years without any need to evolve. Hearts and lungs are really high effort and honestly quite unnecessary. Look, it's called a platy helminth if you want to be fancy, or a flatworm. It has no respiratory or circulatory system like lungs or a heart, and only one hole where food comes in and out. The way it accesses the oxygen and nutrients it needs is by simply letting it kind of float in. This process is called diffusion. The flat shape allows a big surface for particles to come in and out. This species is called Polycellus felina, felina as in cat. These animals have been around since the late Permian period, 270 million years ago. This was before grass had evolved, before the dinosaurs, before even my great grandmother was born in 1812. The world was dominated by the supercontinent Pangaea and these things were starting to pop up. What outlasted this all in the end was the humble flatworm. And there's something that makes this icy little pond very special and the perfect habitat for all sorts of weird and wonderful creatures like the flatworms. This specific habitat of streams and springs flowing over the chalk bedrock is called chalk streams. Chalk streams are amazing habitats with crystal clear water and they're actually globally endangered. There are only around 200 chalk streams in the entire world and the vast majority, over 85%, are in England, mostly in the southeast, where we are now. But what makes these streams so unique? What makes this stream different from any other stream in the country, or in the world for that matter? It's actually not anything you can see. It lies under your feet, under the soil. You may have heard of the idea of underground stores and flows of water, underground rivers. But actually here, it's more like a sponge. The chalk rock underneath you, and under the soil, holds that water in the microscopic holes in its structure. When it rains, the water that soaks through the soil collects in the underground chalk bedrock. This store of water is called the aquifer. A lot of the water feeding chalk streams is water coming directly out of the underground rock. You can see at Asheville Springs, all this water that seems to be coming from nowhere is actually coming from the rock underneath the aquifer. This water comes out really amazingly clear at a steady temperature of around 10 degrees C and rich in minerals from the chalk, which makes it a perfect habitat for all sorts of plants and creatures, from the flatworms to these caddisfly larvae which build themselves cases out of stones, to fish and birds like kingfishers or wagtails. Water voles are now declining in this country but rely on chalk streams. is so clear and filtered is something about the chalk rock itself. The tiny holes act like a filter purifying and cleaning the water as it comes to the surface. The chalk under where we are now is called the upper cretaceous chalk 
because the fossils that make it up are from plants and animals that lived in the late Cretaceous period from 100 to 66 million years ago. If that doesn't sound like too long ago, this was a time period when sea levels had risen so that Europe was mostly underwater and there were forests in the North Pole. And in these European oceans, we had these microscopic algae, corals and shells that made up the fossils we find today in the chalk. Here are some chalk streams locally, if you're wondering. But here's the issue. The water's so clear and clean that 70% of the water supply in southeast England comes from the chalk aquifer water stores. In fact, we might be taking too much. People have been concerned about this since the first paper in 1850, speculating that chalk streams could dry up if too much water was taken. And that's exactly what's happened. In the upper Ivor near Bulldog, the level of water underground has fallen by three to six metres since the 1890s when I remember it. This is obviously really damaging to the rare chalk stream habitat. You can't see fish at all there anymore, and it often just runs dry. Luckily, there are better drinking water solutions on the table, and if you want to follow the progress and get involved, you can check out the Revival website. So as my Sigform EPQ project, I'm making these set of three different videos to talk about streams and history in three locations in Bulldog, Ashwell and Hitchin. You can check out the other videos over here and in the description I've also got a map so you can see all the different locations. Um, I've also got all my sources there in case you don't think I'm actually a time traveller.